Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today we are going to be making our double Irish chain block for our springtime sampler block of the month. Now for the springtime sampler what we're doing is we're sewing four blocks every single month for October, November, December, January, and February. Come March we're going to be putting our quilt all together making our sashing and doing our borders. And I can't wait to help you out as you make your springtime sampler just in time for spring of 2020. If you'd like to see how I went about making this block, please do stick around and I'll show you how I went about putting it together. It is time to get working on block number seven. From block number seven, we need fabric color 16. And we also need 15. We need number one, number 17, and last but not least, color number seven. So I'm going to start with color number seven and I'm going to go through them and get these all cut the way I do it so that you can see my exact process. I am going to use my Creative Grids 8.5 by 24.5 inch ruler and I'm also using the numbers on my mat. I, I depend on the numbers on my mat to help me keep things straight. So the first thing that I did was I pressed all of my fabrics and I also lined up my salvage edge to the point where this part of my fabric is is fairly straight. That's important. Okay. The next thing I do is I line it up on my board and I'm going to zoom the camera out so that you can see just a little bit better. So you can see I've got my fabrics and I've laid this out. You can also see that what I'm doing is I'm lining it up against the bottom line of my board and I'm also making certain that my pattern is pretty straight and that I don't have any creases there. A crease would mean that you've got a um, little bit off skew, um, that the bias is not completely on, that it's a little off skew. So I'm going to pick up my ruler, I'm going to slide it to my left, your right, without picking it up and, and it really doesn't move the fabric this way. And then I'm going to line my ruler up from the top to the bottom of my fabric because I want to clean this edge up here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Get this edge cleaned up. Now we know that this is fabric number seven. So I'm going to now go over to my little key and find out what I do need to cut from fabric number seven. Right. On block seven, which is the Irish chain, it will tell you exactly how many you need of this. So I'm going to, again, I put my ruler beyond the measurement that I need to cut. Then I slide it back. All right. I'm going to make my cut. And when I make this cut, I am going to go ahead and cut the entire strip of the fabric. And then I'm going to take what's left and I'm going to put it with my color number seven so that I can use the remainder of the fabric in another block. All right, I know I only need one of these, so I'm going to fold up my material and I'm going to put it with my number seven fabric. And now I'm just going to rotate this like I rotate the fabrics. Anytime I have to rotate them, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to cut off my salvage because I don't want that in my quill. Lining it up. I'm going to trim it. Pick up my ruler, remove that piece. And I did move it a little bit, so I need to fix that. And then I'm going to cut the block that I need. Now I only need one. And I know I'm a little close on my fabric for this. So I'm actually going to fold the top layer back. I'm going to bring my ruler over it. And I'm going to cut the square that I need. 
making certain that I'm lining up here, here, and here. Right. I'm going to fold this up and I'm going to put that with my block, or I'm sorry, my color number seven fabric so that I've got that tucked aside. And here is my first block. I'm going to continue to go through the other fabrics and then I will come on back. I'm all cut. Now it's time to grab my wool pressing mat and let's start laying these out so that we can see what our quilt is going to look like. Which I always think is an exciting part of it. So let's start with the top row. dark burgundies. I'm going to stick one right there and another one right there. Now if it bothers you to have your stripes because these really are striped fabrics make sure that you get them all lined up the same way if that's something that bothers you. If it's something that doesn't bother you then don't worry about it. Just enjoy. Just do what you're doing. Okay. I know I'm going to need this one, and then I'm going to go like this. And then we need two more of these. I'm going to stick one right here, and one right here. There we go. Alright, I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to fold these over so then I'll attach this one. I'll attach these two together and then I'll make a row. I'm going to make five rows and sew it all together. And I'm not certain which way I'm pressing my seams yet so I'll come back and show you once I decide how I'm going to. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Alright, here is my block all stitched. And now I need to start pressing it. I think what I'm going to do is, what do I want to do? I think I'm going to press my seams these this way and these that way. I think that's what I'm going to do. And let's see. Let's see how they, how they lay. We'll, we'll start with this one. All right. As always, the first thing that you do is set those seams. Then once you've set your seams, you can figure out which way you want to sew, press them. And I'm just gently holding it, and I'm going to just slide my iron across it. And the only thing you have to be careful with doing that is just make sure you don't distort your fabric. Right. So there's row one. All right, let's grab row two. All right. First thing you're going to do is set your seams. Right. 
Now I'm going to take it and I'm just going to press it just like I did the last one. Now one of the neat things about this block is I can press them all the same direction with how I'm working because they're right whether they're right or left. So I'm good to go no matter what. So this way they're that, this way they're that. So here we go. There's row number two. And I am just going to set these just a little bit again. All right now my next row. Again, set your seams. And then once I get this done, what I will do is I will very carefully pin so that I can make certain that I keep my points. This one went that way, this one's going that way. So I'm just going to set it. I'm going to actually set it on top of the other one now because I'm kind of running out of room. And I want to be able to keep going. Went that way, I gotta go that way. So I'm gonna go just like this. Last one. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna pin them together. And then I'm gonna go sew them. And then I'll do one more press. And then block number, what number is this one? Block number seven, the double Irish chain is done. So I'm good. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place two pins again. And the reason why I'm doing pins again is because I'm going to sew like this and look at what comes first. It This goes underneath my presser foot first. And I want this side really to go underneath my presser foot first. And because I can't have it the way I want it, I'm going to double pin it. And that double pinning will keep it right in place the way I want it to be. I'm still butting the seams up together nice and close, but I am going to double pin all of the way down. Double checking to make sure that I've got those two blocks very, very tight together. All right. And then I'll go sew. So I will see you back here. It'll be a couple minutes for me, but it won't be long for you at all. Blink your eyes and I'll be back. Right? That's the way it works. Blink your eyes and I'm back. But it'll take me a minute to do this. Not long, but a minute. Or two. Or three. Alright, I'm going to go sew. Right straight across, okay? Be back in just a minute. All right, here is my block sewn, not pressed. So you're going to watch me press it for the first time, and that'll show me how good my points are. So the first thing I'm going to do is set my seams. Once I've set my seams, then I'm going to determine, well, I think I've already decided what I'm going to do. I have the choice between sending them to one side or the other, or pressing them open. And in this instance, to reduce bulk again, I am going to actually sew them open or press them open. I'm sorry, wrong word. But that's what I'm going to do. I am going to press them open. So for that, I'm going to need my strip stick. And I get asked a lot of times about this little thing. And I will tell you, it is a really nice handy tool and you can tell already I do use it quite a bit when I sew 
and I do really like using it. I think it makes a big difference in my sewing. All right, so the first thing I do is open my seam a little bit, and then I just press. And you could say I'm ironing because I'm moving the iron across it, but I'm also pressing because I do kind of pause. I, well, I call it pressing or ironing, but that's what I call it. I'm going to do this on all four of my seams, and then I will turn it over and see how nice my seams look and if my points match on the other side. that that's good and flat. I don't know that it is. We're going to have to watch that one. So I will keep an eye on that. Come on, open up. This is when it's nice to have fingernails when you go to separate these apart. I don't have any right now because I've been cutting them really short because I've been busy painting in the house and I can't stand to get paint underneath my nails, so I've been keeping them pretty short. Sometime I'll show you what I've been doing in the house. I've been redoing one of our bathrooms, which has been fun. Just, you know, giving it a little facelift. Looking good on this side. Let's turn it over. What do you think? Think I did good. I'm pleased with it. All right, let's give it another press from this side. And again, I'm just really concentrating on these seams because I want my seams to be nice and flat. That way, my when I go to quilt this, my long arm hopping foot won't hop right off the quilt on me. One more row. There we go. This is black. No, I gotta look all the time. I don't know what my problem is here. But here is block number seven. And this one is called a double Irish chain. And it is all done, and I am beyond excited that it is that it came out as nice as it did. I think this is really cool. So there's our next block. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end while I put together this double Irish chain for our springtime sampler block of the month. This is block number seven. So this is the third block that we've completed for the month of October. We've got one more to do. So the next one will be, I believe it's the bow tie, which I think is really cool because I'm going to show you something on my sewing machine, which really is exciting me to be able to share something new and different with you guys. Thank you for joining me. If you like this video and would like to see more tutorials like this, please do give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And if you hit that little bell next to the subscribe, you'll get an email notification whenever I put up a new video. If you would like to participate in our Block of the Month, the pattern is available on my website, Miss Markers Quilts, and we would love to have you join us. Don't forget, if you're not part of our Facebook group, to go out and join. That's where we share all the pictures and the progress of what it is that we're currently making. Again, thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you again really soon with the bow tie block.